Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and I want to talk to you a little bit about animation again, and uh, just some little techniques. You know, so often I get questions from young people starting animation, and they're learning about the bouncing ball and stretch and squash and everything, and they think, okay, that's all great, you know, we're learning about the bouncing ball, but how does all that apply to character animation, to when we actually get into moving characters around? And I can show you firsthand. I want to show you how that all comes together. You know, when you learn about the bouncing ball, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, the bouncing ball is one of the first things we learn as animators uh, coming into this art form. And you literally learn how to bounce a ball. When you bounce a ball, as it bounces, it gets lower and lower and lower because of physics. It loses energy. Um, as, it, as it drops from a single point, and falls it speeds up and so you want to do what's called stretch in, in animation as things speed up we like to stretch them out to cover f uh, further distances when we uh, impact on something we like to squash it it makes it more dynamic so you can do all these things with balls you can also uh, find the arcs you know there, there's because we move things in arcs in animation to get it to move more sm uh, fluidly and, uh, and more and more pleasing to the eye um, there's overlapping action, uh, especially if you have something attached to that ball and it's dragging behind. You have all these subtle little um, fundamentals that we, we try to learn, and a lot of times we learn them individually. And then when you get into animating a character, you're going to find that you need to take all those individual uh, fundamentals that you've learned and you need to apply them all to the shot that you're animating. Okay, so let me show you what I'm talking about. I've, here's a shot that I animated a couple of years ago of this polar bear running into this shot. Here's the first frame. And if I click through, you're going to see several things start to happen. Now, as he comes down, you're going to see the front part of the body start to pop from the, the, from the low point, meaning he's going up in the air. What's going to be interesting in this is that you're going to see two things happen at once that usually happen just one time with a bouncing ball. With a bouncing ball, we have a, a, a single ball that stretches as it falls and it squashes when it hits the ground, stretches when it goes back up, and it, it goes back to being a ball at the apex of its bounce and then stretches again as it comes back down. With the, with the bear running, we basically have two parts of the body doing that at the same time. Or, or just off of, of one another, a couple of frames. So the body comes down, hits the ground and squashes as the back end of the body will stretch as it comes down and then the body come, the front end of the body comes up, pushing off the ground, stretches as the bottom part of the body squashes. And you're gonna see this pattern going through. And here's the squash on the back end of the body, but look at the stretch on the front end of the body right there. And then he comes up and we get the stretch on the back end of the body now. And we come up and there's the apex right there of our arc. And he comes over and look, he's starting to reach with the front end of the body with the arms and then we make contact again. And so as I click through, we're getting these overlapping uh, stretching and squashing. We're getting overlap in the arms. Um, here's that stretch again coming up. Look at that big stretch as the body comes up. That head is leading the way. Big stretch right there. But look at the squash in the back end of the body. Really big stretch. Oh, stretch. And then everything catches up. And we come down again for an impact. And here he settles right there. And then he's going to go through. He settles in. I have these on twos. And then he does the same thing. We get a little bit of a stretch there. See that? I want you to see this all in slow, a slow take like this. Because when you see it at speed, it moves much more fluidly. But look at that. Look at that squash in the butt, but that stretch in the front end of the body. Squash in the butt stretching the front end of the body and here the front end is starting to catch up but we haven't yet gotten the stretch in the back end there it is and now everything catches up there's the apex and then he reaches down and catches himself again another big stretch look at that squash in the back end almost looks like he's made out of rubber 
and then boom everything pops up in the air notice how everything moves in a smooth arc I'm moving everything in an arc okay so now if I play this he's also gonna he's gonna roll around in the snow there now you can see all the drawings much more smoothly and you can see those arcs and how they work see how fluid that makes it and you get that all from doing the stretch and the squash all these little fundamentals that's why you learn those fundament fundamentals in the beginning. You need to learn those arcs. You need to learn the squash and stretch. You need to learn the timing and the physics. Because once you understand that, you can apply it to your characters, and it makes much more believable animation. So there you go. I hope you guys learned something. Go on out there. Try adding some squash and stretch to your animation, and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks. Bye.